Our next, our, our next speaker uh, is Adrian Fritz, who's, um, uh, please come up to the stage, uh, who will be telling us about um, the Kami Sim effort. Yes, uh, thank you. So uh, fortunately, we already heard a lot um, about uh, the motivation uh, of why we, um, why we need simulated data. So um, there needs to be a way to evaluate tools objectively, reproducibly, and in a, a standardized way. So um, that's why we devised KamiSim. Um, but right now, uh, the, this simulator for microbial communities is in a state where I think you, you can not only, or we can not only use it in the scope of Kami, but also if you want to simulate your own data sets and want to test your favorite tool on, um, on a data set which you personally de de um, designed in just a way how you like it. So um, I'm gonna jump right into it um, and following this rough UML diagram of, of the KamiSim pipeline, I'm gonna tell you the, the different steps on how we, um, how we want to design or how we are designing these uh, microbial communities. So the first step is um, actually the community design step. That's how we call it. Uh, so the, the stage where you decide how exactly you want your community, you want to simulate to look like, um, whether it want, you want to emulate a certain, um, a certain environment or you want to use certain genomes you're sequenced. And KamiSim has two different um, ways to design your community. And the first one is a taxonomic profile based, and the second uh, we call a de novo community design. Uh, <clears throat> so for the taxonomic profile based community design, you might have guessed the input is some kind of taxonomic profile um, in, in the biome format, which is something which, for example, falls out from your CHIME pipeline on your 16S rRNA um, sequence data. So you have some kind of um, 16S sequence and its taxonomy, and then the, the abundance of, of that um, in the different samples you, you have. And um, also as additional input, you either need some genome sequences you want to have in your data set. For example, you sequence some um, terrestrial genomes and you want to simulate um, a data set from a, a terrestrial uh, taxonomic profile. So you can use your own genomes um, but if you, if you don't have enough genomes or don't have any genomes, it's entirely possible to just provide a database or um, if you don't provide a database yourself, you can just use or RefSec as a standard where all the RefSec genomes are available as, um, as sequences. And then in the next step, um, given the taxonomic classification of your 16S profile, uh, we map the these classes to real genomes we have in our database or which you provided um, to the pipeline. And then um, maybe some, um, or most, hopefully most of them will map to some genome. So we create a similar community where you have now, instead of this just a 16S sequence and taxonomy, you have real sequence genomes or complete genomes in the best case, and then still the abundances in the different samples. And um, we call that output of the mapped genomes and their abundances, the genome abundance distribution. And the, se the second way of, of simulating a, um, a genome is completely de novo. So in, in this mode, you don't start with a, with a taxonomic profile because you um, <coughs> might not have one or you're not really interested in simulating one specific environment but you just want to use some genomes you you have to to test your favorite tool um, so you just start with the, these genome sequences and some um, taxonomic classification and then um, abundance and um, abundances are drawn from from a, a certain input distribution uh, you've seen this slide in a little bit larger um, on an analysis talk before um, so for Kami, for example, this mode was chosen um, and the abundance we chose was a log normal distribution because I think that's the expected like real distribution within, um, within microbiomes. But uh, you can also choose another distribution and different parameters. So for example, you might choose a uniform distribution so you can get this nice plots like Adam Filippi presented. Um, 
And then um, it is entirely possible to not only simulate like a single sample with a single abundance, but also different <laughs> multi-sample modes. So we try to emulate um, uh, time series modes where the abundances, abundance of every genome is dependent um, of the abundance in previous samples, or a replicates mode, or a differential abundance mode. Um, and also, you have also seen that slide before, um, it is possible if you don't have uh, strains within your data set to um, simulate strains in silico. So if you don't have strains in your, in your data set, but you still want to have them, or in your input genome sequences, but you still want to have them in, in your test data set, um, we use the SG Evolver to um, artificially create strains, if you like so. And finally, the output for that is also a genome abundance distribution. And um, given this genome abundance distribution, so genomes and their abundances, we start like the real metagenome simulation where you get the, um, the reads for your community. And um, since we didn't want to reinvent the wheel there, um, we decided to use existing read simulators, um, just given the, um, uh, uh, yeah, we decided to use existing read simulators. So these are ART for Illumina data and WGSIM, um, PacBioSIM for PacBio data, and NanoSIM for export NanoPore. And should there new sequencing technologies or read simulators um, be developed, it's entirely possible to just also include them in KamiSIM later on. Um, finally, there's the post-processing step. So the gold standards we need, or you need to evaluate, um, are created afterwards. So assembly gold standard, which assembly is um, the theoretical maximum you can expect to create from that data set because, for example, some genomes might be covered um, less than 1x. Then also um, binning gold standards where all these gold standard uh, contexts uh, are because we know where they come from, from which genome we have a gold standard for that and also for the profiling. Um, and finally, if you want to use it in like context of a, of a challenge, it's important like to anonymize and, and shuffle the sequences so you cannot immediately see where these come from just from looking at the uh, fast Q files. And finally, since it's a lot of data, so if you simulate five gigabases per sample and you create 60 samples, you already see that's a few hundred gigabytes, of course, the data is um, compressed. So in summary, um, there is a clear need, I think, for in, in silico data, and that's why we developed um, KamiSim as a pipeline to, to cr create, to simulate microbial communities. Um, it features an elaborate community design, single sample, multi sample, starting from taxonomic profiles. Um, and of course, it produces gold standards, so you can test your favorite tool and software um, against these gold standards. Yes, and with that, I want to um, thank my, my BFO group at the HZI in, in Braunschweig, everyone who um, was and is involved in the development um, of, of KamiSim, um, and if you have any questions, suggestions, issues, and so on, please head over to our um, GitHub or read the preprint, which is available on, on BioArchive, and um, of course, uh, you can always uh, write an email to me and ask questions. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Adrian. Um, we are running a few minutes behind, so again, just one very quick question while the next speaker sets up. So instead of using a regular read simulator after you find the abundances, would it be a viable alternative to use short read data from specific bacterial, like regular sequencing projects and just sampling that at whatever abundances you calculate? Or is there an issue with that method? Uh, yeah, that's actually an excellent question. Um, we were discussing about that. Um, r right now, it's, it's not implemented. Um, and, and of course, it's, it's hard to come by um, the perfect reads for a, for a really good genome. So for example, we, we thought about that, um, whether we can use the, the, the reads which are in RefSec, but these are most of the time still old 454 reads. So I don't know whether we want to use them, but for newer projects which use Illumina data and, and still produce like a really good reference genome which we need for the gold standard, then yeah, it's, we want to, yeah.
Thank you, Adrian. Um,